Um, well, you guys know how uh, specific I am with <laughs> um, romanticism and sentimentality. Um, since I have uh, I've read that book, uh, and a lot of the verses from the Quran that coincide with it, it really had an impact on my life. Uh, and the reason for that is, is that we see so much romanticism and sentimentality, not only, uh, and, and it's not just one part of the world, it's all over the world. Uh, this uh, comes up from the time children are very small. Uh, and I want to quote some from, uh, just a little bit from the book, actually, of romanticism. And one of the verses in the Quran is that, uh, it's, uh, the Quran is a book we've sent, it's, it is a book, which is the Quran. We, uh, we have sent down to you full of blessings, so let men of understanding ponder his signs and take heed, which is Quran 3829. Uh, <clears throat> and there are the same, uh, you can find the same uh, corresponding verses in uh, the Torah or in the Bible or uh, through other religions. But the thing of this is, uh, I think a lot of the problem we have is that, and this is from the book uh, Romanticism, is in societies where the practice of religion has lapsed, is often the case that what is true comes to be regarded as false. And conversely, what is false is regarded as true. And we see that a lot here in the States, in the Western world. And, and I think uh, I, I'm, one of these days, uh, inshallah, I'll make it to the, the Middle East. But I know here, from my experience in the U.S., this is very true. So while encouraging and promoting an errant belief system of disapproved by God, these societies may come to consider the correct belief system as inadequate or even undesirable. The confusion of what is perverse what, with what is true is common to non-religious societies, a condition which permeates their very structure. Romanticism uh, is one such falsehood that is erroneously thought to be true. In a society where people do not live by true religion, romanticism is portrayed by a favorable quality peculiar to compassionate good people. However, as will be, as you can read in this book, if you go on and read the book Romanticism, uh, sentimentality, longing, uh, is a dangerous sentiment to adopt uh, and essentially one of the most harmful characteristics of Romanticism. Uh, and the reason, if you go on and skip up into the book a little bit, we also come to the verse uh, out of the Quran, the stir up any of them you can with your voice and rally against them, your cavalry and your infantry, and share with them and their children and their wealth and make them promises. The promise of Satan is nothing but delusion, Quran 1764. And the reason I wanted to bring that up was because of the, the, um, the misstep by the imam that was just mentioned. Uh, we have this in a lot of different faiths. Um, in uh, the Western world, I know we have, uh, there are a lot of people say denominations, but they're no different than the sects that are in, um, in Muslim, or in Islam. Uh, we have Protest or Presbyterian and Baptist and, and Catholic and, and so forth. Uh, and what we see over here a lot of the times are even these, the, the Christian denominations that are saying the same things against other Christian denominations. Uh, so this is not only a problem in Islam, this is a problem in all faiths. We have it in Judaism too. Uh, and I applaud that um, that was brought up, that if something is said wrong like that, this definitely should be. I know I've had a, an instance like that myself uh, growing up in a Christian um, background and actually being an ordained minister. I had uh, one service that I was at, uh, the, the preacher in this service was using the book of... Uh, of Matthew out of the Bible to basically chastise his wife in front of the church service. Uh, and the way he was using it was in a personal manner to personally make, to, to literally make her feel uh, less worthy than anybody. And I stood up and confronted him about it and let him know this, and this was out of the Bible, that the verses he, were using, he was using, he was using in the wrong way. Uh, and this can also be done in the Quran uh, or in the Torah. The, the verses that can be used, people can take anything they want to out of text and make it fit the way they want. Uh, this is also a problem we have to be um, very aware of, uh, even in Islam, because there are people that are only shown parts of the Quran, and uh, and as was stated earlier, there are um, there are misinterpretations of the Quran out there uh, and of the Hadith. Uh, so when we see something like this that is wrong, it is very important to speak up and to correct it. Uh, there are a lot of people I know uh, of all faiths that would um, 
they will say, well, it's, I, I really don't have the time to correct that. I think that is the wrong outlook. If something is said wrong, you need to correct it. Otherwise, like was said earlier, you will have a lot of people that if it keeps going, they will continue to fall into that path and they will not know what is the truth. Uh, and part of that also goes back to romanticism. Um, because when you know, you, romanticism is so subtle and it leads people away from religion it prevents them from submitting to God as their Lord and ultimately brings numerous other forms of trouble and distress upon them. And, and by doing this, uh, the reason I keep going back to this book is because it really makes a lot of sense. Uh, Haran Yahya with this book, I think, uh, I, I wish everybody would read it. But it really does explain a lot about people giving in to their emotions according to their desires, their hatreds, their susceptibility to temptation, their stubbornness. Uh, when you look at all this, you can compare it to a football game. Uh, people can go to a football game here in the West, and there have been riots over football games. And this is because of sentimentality and romanticism. This is no different than of religion or of any other thing that is a belief. And if somebody lets that sentimentality or that romanticism or that romantic thought about what they should be or what they should see overcome their logic for a situation, then that emotional outburst that comes from that can, dis can, can dissuade people, can lead them away from the truth. So I think uh, definitely making sure that the truth gets out there and correcting any mistruths are, uh, should be really top on our list. Yeah, um, of course these people are uh, they're bigot people. And Allah describes and Allah tells us in the Quran that that kind of people exist who Allah says hypocrites and these people who swear to act in the name of Allah but they are liars Allah says hypocrites so yeah. in another words for example Allah says uh, in the Quran I seek refuge in Allah from a curse Satan do not say about what your lying tongues describe this is lawful and this is unlawful inventing lies against Allah says so mm -hmm. these people do not represent Islam these people are liars, they are hypocrites, but what needs to be done is to teach the real Islam and to educate these people. Of course, we don't want, uh, we don't want, uh, we don't want violence actually, in a violent way against these radical and bigot people, only to educate them, inshallah, correct them, and with the unity of Muslims there will be peace, security everywhere, not only in the Middle East, in the entire world, with the unity of three Abrahamic religions. And these days are coming because Everybody suffered so much in the, uh, in the last century, in the 20th century, and good days are coming. We learned a lot from this, and Muslims got fragmented, they got divided, and Allah orders, Allah says, do not separate. So unity of Muslims is very crucial, with a leader, of course, and this will, of course, uh, have, uh, with the unity of Muslims, there will be alliance with the Christians and Jews also, with the unity of three Abrahamic religions, and then uh, there will be peace everywhere, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. <coughs>